Now, one concept that's going to be helpful for you to understand right off the bat is the concept of batches. Transact SQL always works in batches, and a batch is simply a unit of work. Think of it as if you were in a restaurant placing an order. Each individual dish that you ordered might be the individual SQL statements, but you send your order into the kitchen, and the kitchen processes that order as one batch. So it's a collection of SQL statements that are processed together. If there's a compile error in one of the statements, none of them will be executed. The batch is parsed in one unit and is executed in one unit. Even though it may seem that a batch is doing a number of very unrelated things, SQL Server will decide on its own the most efficient order for performing those different actions, just as the cook in the kitchen may decide what order in which he wants to prepare your dishes. Stored procedures, which we're going to look at in a separate section of this course, run as a single batch. In the query analyzer, when you execute scripts or SQL statements that you create on the fly, you can use the Go statement. This is not really part of Transact SQL. Go is something that's just used in the query analyzer to separate batches and to allow you to form a demarcation between separate batches when you execute a query script. I'll start off here in Windows Explorer and just double click on a script file called tsql.sql and this will automatically open up Query Analyzer for me and we can look at some examples of using Transact SQL. The first thing is this use statement, I'll execute that in order to change from the master to the shark database. And again, I could have made the selection here if I had wanted to. Here is an example of why the word go is sometimes necessary in the query analyzer. I'm going to create a table using this create table statement. It's going to be called TBL test. It'll just have a couple of uh, simple fields in it. And then I'm going to create a view based on the table. Now in a separate section we'll talk more about views. But the point is that the view depends on the table already existing. So if I comment this go in the middle out by just typing two hyphens here and try to execute this as a single batch, I'll highlight both of these statements and hit the execute button here, I'm going to get an error. And the error, as we can see here in the lower pane, is telling me that create view must be the first statement in a query batch. Now that doesn't mean that I can't execute these all at once in one shot. It just means I need to have that go statement so that the batch will be submitted based on this first statement because I've inserted that Go keyword. And then the second statement will be run. So I'll highlight both of these together, and with the Go in the middle, it now runs effectively. And as you can see, it tells me that the commands completed successfully. And if I looked out in the Enterprise Manager, you would see that there's a new table as well as a new view. Now, how about using variables? You may have experience using variables in other programming languages beside T-SQL, and really they're used very much the same way here. The first step is to declare a variable, and you do that using the declare keyword, and it is necessary to declare a variable before you can use it. There are two pieces of information that Transact SQL needs from you when you declare a variable. The name of the variable. And that name is always going to start with a single at sign here when you're talking about local variables, variables that are only going to be used by the current connection. It is also possible to create global variables, and you do that by just using two at signs. So the scope of the variable is determined by this naming convention that's used in Transact SQL, either a single or double at signs at the beginning of the name of the variable. The second piece of information that's required is the data type. And the data types that are available to you will include all the types that you have available when you're creating fields for a table, columns in a table in SQL Server, 
There is one new data type for variables only that was added in SQL Server 2000, and that's the table data type. And we'll look at examples of that when we talk about user-defined functions, which rely on it and which probably are the main reason that that table data type was added. Again, that table data type is one that's used only for variables, but otherwise the same data types are used for variables as for columns in your table. If I want to set the value or assign a value to a variable that I've created, there are several ways I can do it. I can use the set keyword. I can say set at local equal to uh, local phone. Or I can use select. And here we're using select in really a very different way from the way it's used in a standard select statement. Rather than using it to return data to us from a table or to return a result set at all, when you use select in this way, you're simply using it to assign a value. And to avoid confusion, I might recommend that given the choice, you stick to the set keyword. It, in my opinion, makes it clear that you're not creating a return set by using select. But either one will work. So if I just highlight either of these lines and run them, we now have assigned a value to that local variable. But wait a minute. Some red text showed up in the bottom here. We better take a look at that and see what happened. Ah, well, here's a very helpful message. It's telling us you must declare the variable at local first. So it's not enough just to type it in there. You have to actually execute that declaration before you can set the variable. And now it'll tell me that the command completed successfully. Here's an example of using the variable. Once I've declared the variable, I can use it in a select statement the same way I would use any other expression, either a, a constant expression, a field, or any other expression that would be valid in SQL Server. But notice what will happen if I try to execute this select statement now that includes the variable. I get an error message again, and it's very similar to the error message I got before, telling me I have to declare the variable at local. Here's where the concept of batches comes into play. The declaration of the variable, the select or set line that assigns a value to the variable, and then the use of that variable all need to be contained in a single batch. And so in this case, I would need to select all of this and execute all of it in one operation. And of course what I'm doing here is I'm going to set the value of this variable twice. Once using set, once using select, but that's okay. You can assign as many different values to the variable as you want. And now finally when I run this, it'll give me the results that I wanted concatenating in this value local phone with the uh, phone number. Okay. So you'll see examples later that are a lot more useful. Here it's a little unclear why we would bother using a variable. As you'll see later, sometimes variables really are necessary.